What's up, gang? Welcome back to the channel. Got a video for you. It is a 20 by 30 pull-through garage. It's got a door in the front and a door in the back. If you stick around to the end, you're actually even going to see a little bit of siding going on on this one. So let's get right to it. Take the old hundo here and uh, check it for measurements and check it for square. That's the best slab I've ever dealt with. It's exactly 20 feet and exactly 30 feet and square down to a quarter inch. There's got to be something wrong with it somewhere. <laughs> it's not level or something. We'll find that out when we start building. Well, in typical fashion, my, my plates uh, right there and right there are underneath my rafters. Got my treated on the horses, but now I got to get this stuff unburied. Ah! All right, finally got all my plates stacked. On my treated, that's all treated. That's treated. The rest of these are all plain. Oh, number two, SPF. <laughs> kind of garbage, if you ask me, but that's what we got. So, start laying these out, getting them down on the concrete. All right, here's my first plates cut and laid out. Um, five inches here because this will have a corner. Then 15 and a quarter in from the outside. We go 16 from there. 10 foot plates because it's a 30 foot wall. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, it should have been 16 and 14, but I have those for top plates. Um, and we're 30 feet, so we don't land on 16, but it is what it is so that's done uh, I'm gonna get the other side laid out then we'll flip these down mark for the bolts drill them this is the only wall that doesn't have a window in it there's the other 30 foot side corner and then we've got a door here 36 inch door so we do king stud jack stud 38 inch opening jack stud king stud that'll be a 41 inch header does that make sense here's a window king stud jack stud 36 inch opening jack stud king stud 39 inch header so i'm going to get these drilled and set and then do the back wall sharpen my bit I don't even know if that's possible somebody let me know if you can sharpen a pedal bit I'm sure you can all right moving on all my plates are down this front wall is 20 feet wide with a 16 foot door so I just center it up um, I go 16 3 from here to the other side gives me my opening plus trim you can see I got king stud jack jack because you need two jacks where I'm at for a door header that big um, these are like 18 and 3 quarter is what my plate ended up being so since I have a door in the back let me show you I hope you guys can hear me it's so dang windy out today I went 18 and 3 quarter here too so the plates are in line but this is only an 8 foot door so we go to there, eight foot three, gives me my eight foot opening, plus an inch and a half of trim on either side. Getting a window here. 
I showed you the window in this wall. I have all of my headers ready to go. My joists, I had to move the bulk of this stuff to get to my plates, so this is all done already. I'm gonna cut OSB to make these headers. I'm gonna cut OSB to put in between, make the headers uh, three and a half inches wide. And I'm gonna build, build up my window packages. I'm gonna cut my window packages. Uh, and then I might start assembling some stuff. We'll see. The homeowner was home for a second, so I was confirming all the window placements and everything. Those were all spot on on the print, um, so we were good there. And she did tell me that there is a cord outside, which I, I saw earlier, but there is a cord out, so I might not have to run the generator. It looked like a small gauge cord, so we're going to see if it'll run the compressor or not. Hopefully it does. Um, if not, I'm going to run the generator and anger all the neighbors. What do I care? I don't live here. All right, day two. A late start. I had a doctor's appointment this morning. Not much you can do about that. Um, it's time to throw up some walls. My compressor is plugged into the house, and it's working. Beautiful day. Going to actually be warm for the first time in like two weeks. So let's get after this. I've been asked before why I change nails from the top to the bottom. The bottom has a treated plate, so you have to use galvanized nails. The top has no treated plate, so you use regular nails because they're significantly cheaper. You could use galvanized for everything, but if you're rich, I guess. Okay, I knew this was coming. This bolt goes in that hole, which is in line with that stud. So I'm just going to drill it out so I can get this wall up. And then I'll put a, uh, I'll drill in another anchor bolt next to it when I'm done. Need about another three inches here. Would be nice from the concrete guys, but what can you do?
All right. I got to start doing some building here or I'm going to fall way behind. So I'll probably catch up with you guys in a bit. Okay. The walls are all up. Um, those went pretty smoothly. I'll show you the setup here in a second. Uh, but time to install headers. We're going to start with the easy one first and then we'll go to the hard one. Um, you're kind of perched on a windowsill. Hopefully I don't knock you off. But I wanted you guys to kind of see how it goes. I'll show them in other videos also. But I like to get video of this because it seems to be more of the more precarious uh, situations I put myself in. And I want to make sure that I'm uh, rolling on these things. So let's see what happens. Yeah, buddy. Well, that was the easy one. <laughs> Time for the big boy. I need a new line of work. All right, guys. Man, this is a difficult one to get video on. A, they're running security cameras that are watching me constantly, and B, they're home a lot. Homeowner's home right now, mowing the lawn. But everything is up. Eight foot wide door, seven foot tall in the back. This is a three by three window. A three by three window on the patio side. 36 inch door here uh, nothing on the neighbor side and 16 by 7 overhead door in the front got all my double plates on um, keeping all my seams apart see there and there you don't want it so it can hinge um, let's see Anchor bolts are going in next. We're gonna get all these walls bolted down. And then uh, get ready to put some angle bracing up on the walls so they're all plumbed into place and don't go anywhere. It's 
slowly but surely. It's taking quite a while and, and getting video on this one is tough, so it's kind of slowing me down. So you're gonna get what you get on this video, but I'll try to point things out so we all learn. All right, well, this is morning of day three because uh, homeowners were home and I was yapping with them yesterday while I was wrapping up. So I didn't get any footage, and then I had to bail kind of early because my kid's Jeep took a poop and I had to go swap out cars. So probably be working on that this weekend. Anyway, well, I've got the cord dragged out here. I'm going to put in all my extra anchor bolts with the old Bosch Bulldog. And then uh, I go, let's see, go around every door here. And then after that, um, gonna start laying out so I can get my bracing on the walls. Get these ceiling joists up and uh, start getting some OSB on the walls. So let's do it. Knock out the rest of these and get on with our day. Okay, the gable wall gets laid out right above the studs, so 16 on center. The eave wall gets laid out 2 foot on center for rafters, 4 foot on center for the ceiling joists. Go ahead and berate me down in the comments as to how that's wrong and it's a hack job and it's all going to fall down because you guys love doing that, so bring it on.
pretty darn straight. Go to that other side, nail those up. All right, guys, this is the morning of day something or other. Uh, I'll put that on the screen when I figure it out. Uh, it's a Monday morning, and I didn't get as much done Friday as I had hoped to because the homeowner came home early, was doing some yard work, um, and I was yapping with them. So I didn't really get any video, um, and I didn't get as much done as I wanted. But I've got to finish setting these rafters. That's going to be first on the agenda. Uh, then we're going to move to closing in these gables. We'll probably do this back gable, do the whole wall, get all of the uh, OSB on, um, and then do the front, move on from there. I don't know what the weather's supposed to be like. It looks pretty gloomy right now. I don't think it's going to rain, but it might rain, and hopefully it doesn't rain. Um, but I think I can get this probably all the way to the point. Um, we're just throwing OSB on the roof tomorrow. Maybe even farther. I don't know. We'll see. This is all going to be a surprise. We're all going to figure this out at the same time. So when I figure out how far we got, you'll see how far we got. And now I'm just babbling, so I'm going to go to work now because standing here uh, talking to a camera with the neighbors probably staring at me like I'm an idiot, I'm going to just shut up now. Okay. Let's go.
I forgot to nail a stud there. I have to get that in a minute. Um, that's done. It only took me, I don't know, 16 minutes on the camera. So that wasn't too bad. Probably could have done that Friday, but I'm lazy. Um, so we're going to probably set up and do this back gable. I'll get my angle brace in up front uh, to get that all, that wall secure and everything. And go from there. There is, man. There's like a legendary local diner a couple hundred yards from here. And they're cooking up breakfast right now, and I can smell it. And I want to just abandon you guys in this whole job and go stuff my face. But I'm not going to do that because I am here for you and the homeowner and my paycheck because the mortgage company likes money. Go cut all this stuff and then put all said stuff onto this garage. I like to set up a work area for my gable studs, but what I do is throw a bunch of OSB up here, cut my OSB first and get it out of the way, then I can pile all the studs on, cut my studs, go install everything, and then when I come back I have the studs ready to cut for the front already laying here, and then I have the OSB underneath, so it's kind of like a go this way and then it sets you up to go that way. That made sense. <laughs>
I've got six, one, two, three, four, five, six, six sets. Uh, so what I like to do is usually grab one more stud than what I've got. So I've got seven studs on the table. I'll cut these and it should be, leave me enough scrap that will already have the angles on it to do the front. Grab some nails and go put these in. That's done, I gotta do the front. Uh, might put you guys on hiatus for a little bit while I do that and then I'll catch back up with you after that. All right, well, you can see the front wall's been all completely closed in. Um, and now I've got all my K2 
King posts all my collar ties in. I know. Leave the comments down below about how it's all wrong. I like to I like to hear the feedback from you guys. Um I think up next I'm just gonna go ahead and get the 2x6 door trim on for the back door and the front door. And then maybe saws all my, my windows and my door and kind of do that as the last stuff of the day. Then all I've got to do tomorrow is uh, get the OSB on, uh, get all the fascias on, which is the bracing, so the bracing will come down. Um, and then if I care to, I will set the windows and the door. I may be siding this one, so I might wait to do that and run all of the house wrap first. Um, and then cut out and then install the doors the door and the windows over that if you guys understand what I'm talking about it, it to me it seems to make it easier in a more weatherproof way of doing it all right I got everything wrapped up uh, yesterday that I wanted to so that makes this the morning of we're gonna call it day five uh, we'll adjust for uh, any discrepancies on the screen there um, windows door cut. I got my door trim on here. You can see, I think I've pointed this out before in, in a video that normally it just gets a 2x6 because that's what gets wrapped with metal and then the J channel can butt into it. If there was a different design requested or um, if there was an attached garage and I normally like to try to match the trim on the attached garage, it would have been different but this is just a bare bones garage. Right now we're going to try to throw some OSB on this roof, so I'll try to probably set the camera up somewhere and uh, let you guys see that process. You know, it goes pretty quick, so once that's up, um, Eve fascias, rake fascias, and uh, probably the windows and the door just to get them up out of the way. So, Hi. <laughs> I got you guys set up. I've got all of my sheets. My full sheets of OSB um, cut to proper lengths and set up on this side, actually both sides, but uh, I'm going to go up there, I'm going to pop a chalk line and put some reference nails in so I can push the OSB up to it on the first course and I'm just going to let the camera go, we're going to see how long it takes to run these first uh, six, seven and a half sheets, I think it is. Let's go.
26 minutes on the camera, so I was like yapping with you for a second, so it's probably about 25 minutes. Um, I'm going to cut all my rips now for this side because they're really big, so I've got all the sheets of OSB I need staged on the horses. I'm just going to cut them, throw them in, and we will be done with this side. And then we just got to do uh, the same thing on this other side. Cruising. Doing good today. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, my rip sheets are all cut, staged on the horses, throwing them in, done on this side. Yeah, buddy. Eight minutes on the GoPro. That side's done. Uh, step two, repeat step one on side B. Haha. <laughs> oh, get that wrapped up, catch back up with you guys. All done up there. Next, we're going to get the fascias on, which are my bracing here. So that's going to have to come down, but it can come down now because the structure is holding itself up now. It was, um, I ran my OSB full, full, full six footer. So I took the leftover two full, full, full four footer. And then I had about 37 inch rips along the top, which was six full, full, full. I'm gonna run these rake boards, and I'm gonna run them wild, so then I can butt my fascias in on the side. I've put a nail in up top, so I'm going to just kind of butt the rake boards into the nail and nail them up. All right, once those fascias are on, I'll cut the tails off that are running wild right now because I've actually just used the cordless saw uh, the whole job. I never pulled the corded, corded saw out once. Y'all need a little pink hammer that you pick up at a hardware store for like seven bucks. It's the go-to. Had this thing for a million years, man. I love it. Do that other side. Look at that. Look at that. Would you love to have them as uh, your neighbors? <laughs> okay, we're back here. Um, 
I don't know what day it is. Six, seven, eight? <laughs> Thirteen? I don't know. Brought the brake today on my little trailer because I'm wiser than I used to be when I was younger a couple weeks ago when I would just shove this thing in the back of my truck. Um, this was supposed to be shingled, and it's not shingled yet. Shingles are out front. All the accoutrements uh, for the shingling is right there, but it ain't done yet. Um, which is fine. I can keep moving. I'm going to start running some of this house wrap on here. Go after installation of the door and the windows. Get everything taped in, and then I think I can get these overhead doors trimmed so it'll be ready to uh, get the doors installed. So I'm going to do what I can do and uh, go from there. So I'm going to get set up. We'll get rolling here on day 32 and see how far we get. Okay, this is done and this is about all I'm showing you right here. I didn't show you in the installation of all of it because there's a bunch of advertisement phone numbers on there and uh, you know when you goofballs out there probably just start calling and harassing people. <laughs> Who knows? Um, anyway, I'm gonna bend this metal. We got about an inch and a half here, inch and a half here. And we have to go back about you know, five inches there. But what I like to do is do a Z bend. So I'm gonna try to make this bend with this extra bend. It kinda sucks sometimes because the brake's kinda bulky and it's hard to bend. I'll kinda show you that, but um, that's next up is to get both these doors wrapped so um, the doors can be installed whenever need be. I am slow in siding, so there may not be a whole bunch of uh, tutorial on this one because I need to focus and move. We'll see. Maybe about nine inches is my total pieces. Throw it on the ground. We're gonna bend it up. Hopefully it's not scratched. We'll see. Sometimes I try to be efficient, make all my measurements and marks. Kind of bend and cut all at once. But I have found I tend to make mistakes that way. So I don't always do it. I'm not terribly confident today, <laughs> so I'm not doing it. Inch and five sixteenths. Fifty two by four is an inch and a half, and that'd be kind of a tight thing. I hope I know what I'm doing. See, it's an awkward one to do. See, I already screwed the pooch. I can't make the Z-Bend. Okay, we're going to make our Z-Bend first. That's 
how you do it, and I knew that was how you do it. No, oh, I didn't even have you guys set up. I got it. I figured out how to bend it. Let me see if I can salvage this one and actually make this bend here. Look at this. It's installed-ish. <laughs> I will, uh, what I like to do when I run my top boards, seeing how I'm framing and siding, I try to do this for the siders. I don't know if uh, the other siding crews do it this way, but I like to leave a gap. That way I can run the side piece all the way up. This piece will go all the way out, and that is the piece we're going to do next. So let's get after that, uh, and then... You know, that'll take me another gazillion D hours, and then uh, I'll install that, and I'll show you. There we go. That's the top piece, and it only took me a shade under a decade. It's frustrating. I'm just, I don't know why I'm so slow. <laughs> oh, Lord. But that's why I do the Z-Bend, and then I can tape to the house wrap. And there's water can't get in there and destroy anything. All right, we're gonna go do the front one, and I'll probably just catch up to you at some point later on. I'm not gonna subject you guys to watching an idiot that doesn't know what he's doing. What's up, guys? It's the following. I, don't know, I can't really say morning, mid morning, um, from the day yesterday. It didn't go too well. It, it took me t way too long to bend the metal that I wanted to. Although I got the windows in, the door in, and got the metal on that. Uh, the, the roofing crew just left. They finally did get here this morning. Um, they just left, so I wasn't running the camera or anything because it was just too damn loud. Um, so I decided to start today's bad day, compounding on top of yesterday's kind of bad day, by... Uh, putting my F channel in at the wrong height. Um, so I've got to pull that down and go up with that. Uh, the other side's almost done. I'm not going to show you the other side because that's where all the security cameras are for the for the homeowners. I don't want to be in their frame at the moment. Um, i got to move that. I knew the measurement was wrong, and I still did the same thing on the other side, but I caught it really quick, um, so I was able to move it properly. I don't know why my brain ain't braining today. <laughs> it really wasn't yesterday either. I don't know. I got a... I don't know. But we are going to power through here. Um, I'm going to keep working on all this overhang and stuff. My, my, my plan is to get all the metal work done today and be done with the brake so I can throw it back on my trailer and haul it the heck out of here. So... Uh, I'm going to throw you guys on the shelf and I'm going to get back at it and then I'll catch back up with you. Okay, all the stuff it is done. Um, I fixed everything where I measured wrong. Also, the rake boards and the gable are done, so all the metal's done. All the metal, all the overhang, that's all done. I've got the brake pulled, if you can see out there. Um, I got a skate. This might seem counterintuitive, but I gotta knock off here early a little bit because I gotta get ready for a job tomorrow because it's Friday. Contractor gets my Monday through Friday. He don't get the weekends. If I need to, I work weekends for myself, which I'm doing tomorrow, which you may see in another video. I don't know, uh, but I gotta go.
All right, we're done. I'm on the homeowner security camera at the moment. Hopefully they're not watching me going, what's he doing? It's the back. There's the other side. Maybe I'll show you the front, but it's sided. I think I'm gonna caulk in a few things around the doors and stuff. It was kind of grueling. It took me four days to do it, um, which actually is about my pace. Um, about four, one about one day per wall. <laughs> um, the first day was the house wrap and wrapping the doors with the metal, installing the windows and the door, getting the lock set, blah blah blah. So that's stuff that kind of would, should have been done under the framing, but I left it purely for that day. Um, Second day was all of the overhang, all the soffit, all the rest of the metal work. It was done so I could pull the brake. Yesterday, I ran both eave walls. I didn't run the camera at all yesterday because um, contractor came by a couple times. Homeowners were coming and going and had a buddy with them and stuff. So it was very hectic here. Uh, door guy was here putting in both the doors. Um, so I never even got the camera out. Um, and then I did actually even start the front wall, but I needed light blocks. There weren't any light blocks here and they wanted two lights in, so I was like, well, I'll pick those up on the way in. Um, it got a little late yesterday. So I worked until I got to the light block part, took off, picked those up on the morning, in this, picked those up this morning, threw them in, got the whole front done, just wrapped up the back. Now I gotta clean up. Um, I just got to organize everything because I'm going to actually uh, pull everything out for the contractor, do a total cleanup on it, pick up material and stuff. That's it. That's my saga. And uh, I'll have to count the days on the videos to see how long this actually took me. Longer than I wanted to. And now, because it's a little bit early on the last day, I'm getting the heck out of here and going to the garage I'm building for another guy um, that I have my old help with me on that and by the time you're seeing this video that garage might already be done I don't know but that's where I'm heading and uh, I guess this should almost be a blooper reel the way this job went <laughs> especially the siding part but what can you do so I uh, get cleaned up get out of here and I'll catch you guys next time all right guys I know that that uh, siding wasn't the greatest it was a drag to be doing that. I'm not the greatest at siding. If you want to see a video of, you know, how I attempt to do siding, let me know. I don't take on a lot of those jobs, um, but I can try to make sure I have one where I can get some video. So put it down in the comments if you want to see a more siding-centric video, I guess. Siding-centric. Yeah, I think that's it. So... Anyway, uh, thanks for sticking around, guys, and uh, I know this one was a long one, over an hour long. I tried to pare it down as much as I could, but hey, um, you guys are the ones, you are the, you're the crew, the, you're the ones that stick around, and for you guys that stuck around this long, uh, if you watch the whole thing, uh, tell me what I called my hammer earlier. If you watch the whole thing, you'll know. <laughs> All right, gang.